So we count on authors like you to give us books, to give us an insight into what the family goes through. Yes, and that's what I tried to do in this particular the first two books of mine were telling people what family members go through because they forget that when that person, that key person, when a mother or a father goes to prison, the whole mm-hmm. family is for the time, especially if you decide to stay with the person. So your whole life revolves around that that jail, that person, you know, that whole but that whole right. culture, that whole jail culture. So I was able to put that, you know, like, look, you're not the only one that's suffering. Yeah, you in here, but we're out here suffering in this work, you know. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to let people know how, how that felt and what I went through and what my sons went through. So, Well, hopefully someone will read it and wake up because it's not just, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be the one that pays the price if I get caught. No, the whole family pays a price when you get caught. Not if you get caught, oh, it's when you get caught. Yes, yes. So then that takes you through the first two books, and then you yes. have two more after that. So yes. you have pay, payback is a word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and side check. So which one came first? Um, payback is the continuation of family time. Don't get caught up. Okay. Because I I didn't pay him back, but it shows how my life after I decided to sever ties. What was mm-hmm. next? What happened next? And then, of course, it's not all true. So you spice it up. So yeah. <laughs> that's basically of course. what is exactly what it's, it's talking about. It's about women who are side chicks, and they shouldn't be. Like, they have, for me, the book is telling people not to be side chicks, to have more self-esteem for yourself, that you would want a relationship on your own. You should not mm-hmm. want to be someone's side chick. So that in itself, and that's what that book is about as well. <laughs> well, we all need those books. I mean, women out there, we have this mindset, and I don't know where this mindset came from, if this started in the 80s, 70s, 60s, I don't know. But we go, oh, it's okay to be the side person or the mistress or the whatever. No, it's not okay. You want a relationship for yourself. You don't need to be the third wheel in a relationship. And a lot of people believe that it's okay. They they convince themselves that it's mm-hmm. okay. Oh, I don't want. And, and they'll say stuff like, "Oh, I don't want. I'm I'm glad he brought home today to you know to his to his wife." And I'm looking mm-hmm. at them like, "Are you serious? Are you like celebrating Valentine's Day on February the 15th? You like doing Christmas on February on December 26th? Like, you will never be in the forefront if you don't have your own relationship." So that's basically what that book is trying to teach them and talk exactly. about. Exactly. Are you so self-esteem, putting yourself down, that it's okay in your mind to be the third wheel to actually you're going to end up breaking up a family because it's okay for you to send them home to their wives or their <laughs> yeah yeah. It's just why are the <laughs> doing that to yourself you're all you're doing is destroying your heart you're destroying any chance of your own happiness yes yes and a lot of women i, I don't and, and like you said i don't understand where you get it in your mind that it's okay that is okay for you to be the third wheel in a relationship and i just want them to get some self-esteem and realize no you are beautiful you deserve mm-hmm. to be loved and in your own relationship. So that's basically what that particular book is talking about. Exactly. If you read this book and you don't go, oh, my goodness, I need to have help, I need a life coach, I need someone to tell me I'm beautiful because I don't believe in myself. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many women out there I talk to. I'm like, are you serious right now? 
And it's just <laughs> there's men that do this too. It's okay for their girlfriend to have another dude. I'm like, what are you doing? Thank Why you. is this okay I with you? I, I don't <laughs> get this mentality. I really don't. Me either. Me either. I don't understand. I don't either. Now, I'm assuming Brown Girl is your children's book? Yes, it is one of, this is the most, this book has done so much. Um, out, of, out of one year of being out, it has developed a Brown Girl movement for me. I have a Brown Girl clothing line that's coming out. I have T-shirts. It is just amazing. And this book came about because, um, my good girlfriend, Kimberly Frederick Griffin, she's in Virginia. She was born in Harlem like myself. Um, she asked me last year, she said, Pam, why don't you write a children's book? And I'm like, I can't write a children's book. I'm an urban writer. No, no, no. She was like, no, I think you should try to write a book because when she was a, a young girl, she is darker skinned than myself. She told me that she used to get bullied because of her skin color. And I couldn't believe that because Kim is beautiful. I was like, you really had a complex about that? And she was like, yeah. So from that simple conversation, Brown Girl came about. And I had a team, my team, um, which was Chandler Smith and Zaya Adams. They are my girlfriend, Charlene Smith's son. Um, now they're 13 and 20, but they were uh, 12 and 19 last year when we did the book. So Chandler, he helped with the artwork. And his brother is in college as a um, graphic designer, illustrator. So together, he came up with the Brown Girl book. I did the story. He did, he did the drawings. And we came up with this phenomenal, phenomenal project. And I am so ever grateful to them for us doing the book. And it has touched a lot of lives. And it's actually in a um, library in Nigeria, Africa. So I'm very proud about that as well. So the book is doing what that, it's supposed to do. And it's, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say that's awesome that you're getting all this movie together. There is a model I follow that's out of Africa. She has the world's darkest skin. Her skin is midnight, and she's so beautiful. I mean, yes. I, I forget what her name is. But, I mean, I can't understand the complex when your skin is darker or if someone else, why you would have a complex about that. I mean, you have so many beautiful women out there. We need to be comfortable with who we are. It doesn't matter what skin color you have, but you have to be comfortable with who you are. And this model, yeah. she just came out, I think, last year. It's just wonderful to watch her. Let me see if I can find her real quick. But I'm glad yeah, I, that you I have this. In, um, Go ahead. I, just, I mean, I, I see a lot of models, and I see their mm -hmm. skin color, and I think they're beautiful. And us as brown people, we are beautiful in all facets. And I just am so happy that this particular book was giving them, giving the young girls you know, encouragement and letting them know that they are beautiful by nature and they should not care about what color their skin is. So mm -hmm. that's, and it, it's really, I mean, it really, it bursts into a whole nother movement. Um, mm -hmm. February 23rd is actually National Brown Girl Day. So we had National Brown Girl Day out here in New York. I did the first one here and it was amazing because we had young girls, we had older women, we had vendors just getting together and loving each other and celebrating their brown skin. So it was really a great, great, it's a great book, and I'm really proud of that, of that particular body of work that I've done. I'm proud of everything, but this particular one is really giving encouragement to young girls everywhere. That is wonderful. When you can actually inspire the younger generation to be comfortable with who they are and celebrate who they are, that is wonderful. Thank you. I try my best to um, put myself into the book, and the book is actually sparking a lot of conversation. Um, it, it's doing well, and I'm really proud of it. Like I said, um, I spoke at a couple of schools. I did a couple of readings for the children, and now it also has a spoken word. I have a spoken word on iTunes 
called the Brown Girl Remix, which in the book I actually wrote a letter of love to Brown Girl where we turned it into an action song because it has a hook, and that came about with my characters, which are Pigtail, Afropuff, the original Brown Girl, um, Pigtail, Afropuff, the original Brown Girl, Soft Girls, and and Locks. So that's, you know, basically where it all came about. And now it's T-shirts, it's a clothing line coming out. So that particular book sparked a lot of stuff. So I'm really proud about it. So this is their baby. This is your the one that's catapulting your career. Where are your career going from here? Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for <laughs> Disney, okay? I want to do a cartoon. I want to do whatever it is to let our brown community know that they're beautiful and amazing. I'm just waiting for it to just evolve into whatever it's going to go, wherever it's going to take me. I'm just ready. Well, hopefully we can get you there with this radio show. I mean, seriously, if you can catapult just a book, a single book this far, can you imagine what it could be with a 30-minute television show once a week? Yes. I I, I, <laughs> I can't even imagine, like, because even now I'm, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted because it's only been a year that the book has been out. And I'm mm-hmm. a, and I'm also like my own. I'm a self-published author, so for it to have done this much, so yeah, I'm like really. Hopefully, it'll just go further than my wildest dreams. Well, how many books in the Brown Girl series, or it's going to have to be a series if it's doing this well? Are you thinking about doing? I'm doing. I'm thinking about everything because she started off like in elementary school, so I'm thinking mm-hmm. Brown Girl goes to college, Brown Girl, you know, gets her first job. It just, it, the, the possibilities are endless. The, just to show, the sky's the limit. You know, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Okay. So we have the children's line going. Are you writing them more adult books? Yes, um, I'm doing my first series, and it's called um, I'm Not Defined by My um, My Address. Um, and the first book is almost finished, but it's about a gentleman who finds the love of his life, and his address happens to be in a state prison. And oh. they fall in love, and, and it just goes from there. And it's really, it's going to be a really deep piece. And I'm really mm-hmm. proud of it because it's my first series that I'm writing, so I think it's going to do well as well. Plus, I'm going about to, I'm almost finished with Brown Boy because I was getting a lot of people saying, "Well, we need something for our Brown Boy," so that'll be coming out at the end of the summer. So I'm looking forward to that as well. That is awesome that you're teaching kids across the board, boys, girls, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That it's okay to be comfortable in your skin. This is going to be a whole movement in itself. I hope so. That's what I'm pushing for. (laughs) (laughs) So we have these coming out. Now, on your website, you have, I don't know if the link's just not working, nonprofit nonprofit collaboration and community connections. Do you want to go a little bit into that? Well, um, basically, we're going to start in September. We're starting to have workshops for the girls um, to keep peace and self-love. We're going to have them, you know, for the older girls, we're starting to get them college prep. We're going to have mentors for them. Um, The website, for some reason, is acting crazy lately, but we're trying to update it. So we have a fan club starting off, and one of my um, chapters is in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Her her name is Lori. She read the book when when she was 16. And she actually contacted me and said the book inspired her so much. She wanted to do a fan club. So that's how the fan club started. So she started the fan club, and it's basically, like I said, to be a mentoring program for the young ladies, for them to, you know, know self-love, to know that they are beautiful. So we're going to take them to college tours, get them ready for college, 
just a whole bunch of mentoring and just giving them self love, self respect, different things of that nature. Well, I can't wait to hear more about this because there's so many girls out there that need a little self esteem booster. We need that more girls yeah. going to college. We need more girls stepping up with the self confidence that they are beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it all starts with our young, teach them as girls. Yes. If if we don't get them young, it's too late because then they have to be reprogrammed as adults. And reprogramming an adult is super hard. Yes, it is. (laughs) It is super hard. So we are trying to grab them now to let them know you're beautiful, you can take over the world. So that's what we're trying to do. I mean, women out there today, we can do so much if we had the mindset. And I'm a mindset coach, so I talk about mindset a lot. If you have the mindset you can do anything, you can do anything. Quit listening to people uh, tell you you can't or you're not beautiful enough or whatever the negative is that they are telling you, stop. You are beautiful. You can do anything. Yes. Yes, you can. And it doesn't matter where you come from. You can elevate yourself. Thank you. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. So where can our listeners find you? Okay, they can find me. I'm on all social media. So on Facebook, I'm author Pamela J. Hayes. On my IG, I'm author Pamela Hayes. You can go to my website, which is a book a dream dot org. Um, you can email me at a book a dream at gmail dot com, or you can call me on my business line because my phone is open twenty four hours a day four one three two one eight six two zero four, and you'll get me personally wherever I can help, or you want you know me to come talk to speak to people or anything. I'm available. That is awesome that you do that because not every author has is available for conversations. <laughs> I, I, yes, I know that. <laughs> so I mean, I, seriously. I, I yeah. Yeah, we have to have those conversations that, as an author, we have to be available. When you're doing something that motivates our children, we have to be yeah. available. You can't yeah, close yourself so off, why. write a wonderful book or something like that, and then expect people to come to you when you're not available. Exactly. So I'm available all the time. I see children in the city. I love them. I love kids. They are just like little sponges. They are beautiful creatures, and we need to, uh, let, you know, just love them and teach them and let them go into beautiful and just, you know, being. So that's why I'm open 24 hours. They can call me at any time. And I'm always there. That is so wonderful. And I think we covered everything that we can possibly cover today. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun talking to authors that actually motivate people. And then you have your clothing line that's coming out. You have your book series for children coming out because it can't stop at one book. You have so much going on with your children's thing because our children need it. Yes, they do. They really do. They really do. Yeah, and then you have the adult ones that teaches us the woman's side or the family side of different problems. Correct. (laughs) But there is one book, I'm just now looking at it, and we didn't really touch base on it, Uh was, where am I at? I just seen it. Oh, Fire, the Diary of a Bisexual Woman? That is it. (laughs) That particular story is about a woman that I know personally, but she wanted me to tell her story because she wanted to let people know that it's all about self-love. Like, it's you, because she was in a relationship with a male, and they kept breaking her heart. So she decided mm-hmm. to try to be 
bisexual and goes to being with a woman, and that woman broke her heart as well. So it's not about men or women, or it's just about you loving yourself and you finding somebody to love you like you love them. So that's basically what that book is about. Well, I'm glad that you were able to write that for her because yeah. having friends that are LGBTQ, I think I yeah. got all the letters right. My daughter corrects me all the time. <laughs> it's not about one side or other. It's being able to love yourself because then you will attract the person you're meant to be with. Exactly. It, and that goes across the board. That, that is every person that falls in love. If you're able to love yourself, you will attract the person that can love you like you love yourself. Otherwise, you just keep fall, falling in love with creeps. Yes. Yes, that is so very true. <laughs> I can't put it any more blunt. I can't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as women, we ca- we catch catch a lot of fish to kiss them, to find our friend, and yes. it doesn't come until we love ourselves that we found find them. That is so true. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. So so true. Yeah. So I can only imagine being in the LGBTQT genre, what they go through because it's the same thing. You have to love yourself and other. In order to attract your soulmate. Correct. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Great. This has been a very fun show, very very educational. (laughs) (laughs) And I love having fun. I mean, I love inspiring people. So thank you so much. And I'll be keeping an eye out for Brown Boy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And and definitely Brown Boy will be coming soon. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll be waiting for it because if we can inspire the boys like we inspire the girls, I think we'll have a working society. Yes, we would. And that's what I'm trying to do. We need to fix society one one thing at a time, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, and thank you again. God bless.